So for my assignment, I decided to investigate an individual named Nancy Hart. Now, maybe that's familiar for some people. Uh, if you're from Georgia, I, I recognize that as probably a name you have heard throughout history. Um, before I get into the backstory of who Nancy Hart is and what makes her significant, I like to address a nickname. I think nicknames are powerful things. They come from uh, some act or, or, or some character trait of who an individual is. That, that sets them aside, that sets them apart. Now we have, of course, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was, was Ike. We had Honest Abe was Abraham Lincoln. One of my personal favorites, I don't know if this is an official nickname, but Arnold Schwarzenegger was the Governator. I think that's a great nickname, right? And then of course, George Washington is known as the father of our country. What a great nickname. Nancy Hart may have a nickname, uh, according to her friends, um, it's not something you're going to see in history books. There's probably not a biography written on her. But a nickname that I came up for her is Snakebird. Now, Snakebird is a term that I, I stole from a pastor, uh, but it's it's based on uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, where Jesus tells his disciples they need to be wise like serpents, but harmless like a dove. So it's this idea that you have to be cunning, you have to be wise, you have to be crafty, you have to have a plan, you have to be thoughtful, you have to think things out, but you also have to appear uh, harmless. You have to appear like you're, you're, you're soft-hearted, you're kind, you're tender, those types of things. That was the call that he pushed out to them. And I don't think Nancy Hart was a, an evangelist or a disciple by any means, but she does have a very unique story. So let's get to that story. Now, she's one of the most acclaimed female contributors that came out of Georgia during the Revolutionary War. Uh, historians put her birth year around 1735 in North Carolina. Now, physically speaking, Nancy Hart was not easy on the eyes. Uh, she was cross-eyed, she had a scarred face due to smallpox, and she was red-headed as well. Not that being red-headed discounts you as being a beautiful person, but these other two factors were things that stood out to me and in fact was, was made known that she wasn't really someone that people wanted to look at. She wasn't very pretty. So along with this, uh, this, this look of, of not being very easy on the eyes, she also had a, an attitude and a demeanor that was very feisty. You didn't want to mess with Nancy. Nancy would put you in your place. Nancy was going to spank her kids at the, sh the, the, the shopping center no matter what. She didn't care who was seen around. If she disagreed with what you did or with what you said, she would let you know. Nancy was a real person, but she was very feisty. Now, there was a name that the Indians in Georgia gave her, and it was Wahachi which means war woman. She was very contentious. She was very confrontational. She was not submissive uh, if she disagreed with things. Now, you may be thinking, well, then why would we call her a snake bird? She sounds like she's very cunning, very crafty, very wise like a snake, but I'm, 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 I'm missing this guidance of, of where's that connection to how is she harmless like a dove? Hold on, I will get to that. So, during the, the Revolutionary War, her, her husband, of course, was, was called to arms and, and went and served in the Continental Army. Now, during this time, she's left to fend for her house. She's left to, to watch over the, the cabin, watch over the kids, um, you know, cook, clean, gather, hunt, all those different things. She was known as having a great shot despite being cross-eyed. I wonder what she could have accomplished had her eyes been uh, facing the same direction. Now, during the war, uh, she worked as a spy. Um, she would sneak into these British camps that were set up near uh, her home, and she would throw a cloak on, and she'd stumble in and act like she was a simple-minded man and, and try to steal information regarding the British military. And then when she gets kicked out, she would take that information to uh, the representatives of the Continental Army or the militia in that area. But that's not what she's most known for, and that's not what stood out to me most about her. There's a story, uh, some folklore, some mythology of, of an occurrence that happened in her home. So she was at her, her cabin with her family, her, her kids, 
and the six Tory soldiers walked in and, and demanded info regarding this Whig party leader. They wanted to know where this guy was, where his loyalties were, these types of things. And uh, interesting enough, that guy had just left the house. Whoever that Whig leader was, he had just left her house. Now she acted like she had no idea what they were talking about. She was acting aloof, confused. And so one of the soldiers was frustrated. He didn't believe what she was saying. And so he shot her prized uh, gobbler, her, her turkey. And then he demanded on top of that to add some insult to injury was, now I want you to cook that turkey. And so she could have responded and, and, and gone to a whole nother level, been feisty. But what she decided to do was where that, 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 that snake bird term comes in, where I think she, she earns that nickname. So she starts cooking this turkey um, and, and they all sit down at the table and while she's in the kitchen cooking the turkey, she serves them wine. She brings them out some wine, uh, really just to let them relax and then hang out for a little bit. They're going to be waiting for dinner. They, this was a, a meeting. This was a, uh, a mission. Now they're going to be able to sit down, have a drink, and of course, get some, some free food. So while they're sitting um, and, and, and drinking their wine, she, she stacks the weapons in the corner of the, the cabin. And then her daughter goes outside and sounds the, the conch shell, just notifying the town that there's trouble in the cabin and we need some reinforcements. We need some help. And so she uh, is continuing to serve these, uh, these gentlemen. And each time she's walking from the, the dining area to the kitchen, she's slipping one of the loaded rifles, one of these soldiers' rifles through the walls to her daughter on the other side. Now she gets about three or four through the door or through that crack and one of the Tories notices something and he, he, he threatens uh, to, to, to have issue. He tells her to stop so she freezes. And then she picks up one of the loaded rifles that are right next to her and she says, listen, if you take another step forward, I'm gonna shoot you, I'm gonna end your life. Believing she's bluffing, he takes a step forward, she fires a shot, bam, guy is killed. So that wasn't enough. Now another Tory steps up and demands that she sets down that rifle. She picks up another rifle, says, if you take another step forward, you're going to have the same fate as, as, as this other guy. Boom, takes a step forward, shot and killed. So now at that point, the other four Tories are, are, are startled, they're rattled, um, and, and they, they hang tight. They're just, they're just stand still. She has uh, these four gentlemen at, at, at gunpoint waiting for those reinforcements, waiting for her husband to show up, who ultimately does. When he arrives, uh, they want to shoot him on the spot. And she says, no, let's hang him. Let's hang them in this tree so everyone can see who these people are and that we stood up for them. So they hang him. Uh, they ultimately bury him. Now, the story doesn't end there. We have some confirmation that this was actually something that happened. This just isn't folklore uh, that came out of Georgia. Um, in 1912, railroad workers um, uncovered this, uh, this grave, this unmarked grave, and there were six skeletons beneath this, uh, this tree. And they have that confirmation that these were possibly those six Tory soldiers that we hear about in the story re regarding Nancy Hart. So I would absolutely say in history, Nancy Hart earned the nickname of being a snake bird. She was cunning. She was wise. She made up a plan, but she also put on a front of being submissive, of serving these soldiers and waited for that opportune time. Thank you. Have a good night.